Hey everybody, welcome back to another installment of Awaken Geekdom here on YouTube. My name is Giovanni Menendez, and today we're going to be talking about Junji Ito's Frankenstein Ito Collection hardcover thingamajig. I finally read it. Well, actually, truth be told, I read it a long time ago and completely forgot to make a review on it. So here I am now. I remember in the previous video when I talked about uh, Junji Ito's Smashed, I remembered in real time Oh, I, I forgot to make a video about Frankenstein. So here we are. So what is this book about? Of course, it is adapting the Mary Shelley classic Frankenstein novel from the 1800s, I think if memory serves me right. Look, um, my history with Frankenstein is a little bit different than most people. I read uh, portions of it growing up in high school uh, for uh, different classes and stuff, I guess. I, I don't, I don't, I barely remember the story. I know what happens. I know about Frankenstein's monster and all that stuff. So, uh, yeah, this book basically takes that source material and does a... Um, kind of a straightforward adaptation. It It's a little bit loose here and there, but for the most part, I gotta say it's pretty faithful to what uh, Mary did way back, uh, so many centuries ago. Uh, Ito, of course, is known for taking like the, uh, uh, the mundane and infusing it with satire, some sort of bizarre humor, and of course his trademark. Uh, body uh, uh, horror and, and just uh, how wonderful everything looks under his scope and how terrifying it can be. So with Frankenstein, you get at least 150 some pages of uh, adapting the classic novel and you get some space for some extra short stories that he made. Now with those short stories, they're mostly hit or miss. There was one that I really liked with the uh, house, jeez, uh, I can't remember right now the name of the character, but the character appears in multiple stories, which of course fuels my um, theory that it's all just one huge connected universe of miserable characters. And he has this house where uh, he's seeing like ghostly apparitions in the walls and like encrusted in the actual haunted mansion and his parents are away but then you find out there's like an alternate portal or sorry a portal to like an alternate dimension stuff like that creepy stuff like that that you come to expect from Junji Ito now there are some other stories where you know it's creepy it's it's kind of cool but it, it's kind of you know it kind of falls flat the main drive of this book undoubtedly has to be the Frankenstein portion, which, you know, takes a huge chunk out of this book, like I said, 150-some pages. It, this is what you're coming in here for. It is a good adaptation, but of course, Ito infuses it with this wonderful, beautiful, love crafty and splendor that he's known for. And everything just looks surreal, it looks great, the Frankenstein monster looks terrifying looks disgusting and and just a, a beautiful tone of dread i mean plus that scene where uh the bride of frankenstein is involved in her creation and all that stuff like i'm gonna show you here real time look at all of this awesomeness and it is just really really eerie spectacular to read for the most part i i cannot and i'm sorry because i haven't read the original uh 100 through i can't tell you how exactly faithful it is but from looking online and reading a quick synopsis on the book i can't uh i am confident that ito paid his respects to the original source material and did a wonderful job adapting to it i didn't i, I had forgotten the whole scene with uh them in uh the north pole i think or antarctica one of the poles and uh, uh, that whole scene really captivated me because I had forgotten about it. So I, when I was reading it, I'm like, is this really what happened? And uh, yeah, it, it did. So in short, if you are a fan of Frankenstein and you want to read a new, some would say grotesque version of the story, then uh, yeah, I mean, you, you gotta you gotta check that out seriously. There are elements from the original uh, material here which um, 
or excuse me, I should say, you know, they pay homage to the original source material and to the movies as well. I took a no I took notice of that because there are a couple references to uh, the long history of uh, Frankenstein's monster and the way people have treated him. Uh, <sighs> You know, this reading this book reminds me of just spending an afternoon where the weather is gray, grizzled, and it's a chill that's coming down, and you feel it in your very soul. It's that type of weather. I felt that when I was reading this book. Plus, it didn't help that I was reading it like a uh, close to midnight or something like that, because you know it's a horror book. You have to read it at the worst possible time. So, uh, yeah, Junji Ito, I love his work, I'm a huge fan, and, and uh, you know, it's stuff like this, where it's really gross and really awesome and really spectacular. The drawings, as usual, are fantastic, they're wonderful. I love the story of how uh, you have a character of Frankenstein, uh, Dr. Frankenstein, and his pursuit of... For knowledge, uh, scientific uh, questioning, and wanting to have all the answers, and life uh, being uh, the uh, crazy bitch that it can be, answering back in the form of this tragedy of the Frankenstein monster and the stuff that uh, the doctor goes through with his family. I won't spoil anything, but it's quite an ordeal that this man is going through, and I think Ito played all the right cards in adapting this story, and it was uh, really wonderful to see. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, the drawings, everything is exceptional. The writing is actually pretty cool because he doesn't go for the old... Uh, uh, in, uh, English jargon from uh, way back. Instead, you get a more uh, contemporary, streamlined uh, translation into English. I, I, again, I'm no, I don't know if I'm spoiling anything. I'm, I'm sorry. I try not to spoil things on this channel. But again, for the most part, it is a wonderful adaptation. The short stories, on the other hand, uh, leave much to be desired. I think they could have been a little bit better. There are a couple uh, stories in here like uh, Next Spectre, which I thought was pretty uh, interesting, although extremely weird, which is, you know, who, who, who are we kidding? That's the norm with uh, this author. And you also had the adventures of Non Non, the adorable Maltese dog from the Ito family, and, and bless that little doggy, and she was awesome. But then you had stories like this, Bog of Living Spirits, which I gotta be honest with you, kind of, eh, they're okay. Strange Tale of Oshikiri, The Walls, looking pretty fantastic, in my opinion. And of course there was that other one uh, of the short stories that I really loved was the one with the little girl that was being dollified, if I said that correctly. She was being turned into a doll, and it is expertly done, in my opinion. It, it gave me the creeps from day one, and I still remember it fondly because it was creepy as shit. And I'm sorry for the cursing, but that's a fact. So yeah, overall, you're coming in here... Well, you can't see it. You're coming in here for this story, Frankenstein. The short stories, mm, whatever. But yeah, in my Ito ranking, I place this atop. Let's see. Um... I still have Uzumaki as my favorite read. I gotta put Tomi a close second because at least 80% of that book I would loved. Then I'm gonna... I'm going to uh, place Frankenstein as my third read because it's really good. Fragments of Horror comes next. Then the uh, Shiver smashed Gyo. I haven't read uh, Dissolving Classroom. That's the only thing I don't uh, own yet in Collected Edition. And last but not least uh, is uh, The Cat Diary. That's my current ranking for the Itoverse, ladies and gentlemen. So what did you guys think of uh, Junji Ito's Frankenstein? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if not, like I always say, recommend me some good horror manga. I'm very interested in checking those out. So yeah, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. As always, thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, and just being a part of the A Week in Geekdom family here on YouTube. Of course, following me on social media, whether it be uh, Instagram or Facebook and uh, 
Twitter and all that stuff. Thank you so very much. You are the absolute best. Blessings to every single one of you. I have got to go. I will catch all of you on our next video.